Alpha Protocol is definitely an evolution of the things that we've learned in role-playing games. <laughs> An RPG is a role-playing game, and as you go through the game, you basically discover either more about yourself or more about the story that's actually occurring. Moving into the late 90s, there was a resurgence in role-playing games that we were lucky enough to be part of, uh, with games like Fallout, Baldur's Gate, and Planescape Torment, where the genre really advanced and became much more story-based. We have quite a pedigree in, in working on games like Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, Neverwinter Nights 2. And then uh, we were able to branch out to doing sort of more experimental RPGs, which we're doing with Alpha Protocol, which is our first uh, real world RPG, which I'm incredibly excited about. We really wanted to make an action y game, something that really made the player have to think both tactically and be a, a little twitchy at the same time. When it comes to Alpha Protocol being the forefront of modern RPGs, I definitely think we have some things going for us. You have uh, player character growth, you know, RPG systems and stats, combat. We have a lot more action elements in a kind of a real-time setting. A story that branches with dialogue. Our combat mechanics are excellent. Tons of items and equipment. And Alpha Protocol really stood out as this, this exciting thing that, that we could do where we could take all of this experience and make something that was really new and different and, and incredibly cool. Our use of exploration of, uh, of real world spaces is intriguing for the player because they're actually exploring spaces they've actually gone through in the real world. But now there's a whole lot of enemies to fight, uh, cool things to find, doors to kick down. Like Everything that you're doing in the world is, is sort of tangible in a way that things in high, in high fantasy or maybe in science fiction are not tangible. Yeah. Basically, you're taking the real world and now you get to, to play around with it to your, to your heart's content. All of the owners and a lot of the senior level people at the company have role playing experience that dates back to pen and paper. And in a pen and paper game, you can kind of do anything you want. And so when we go into making a game, we, we want to try and have that same sort of experience. Choice and consequence in a role playing game, uh, we feel very strongly about as it's sort of core to the role playing experience. I think you have to have lots of items and equipment and things like that that the player is going to be able to use to grow their character over the game. Everybody talks about story in games and that story is the most important thing, but I think we really hit it. The more we allow a player to customize and sort of choose the skills and abilities they want and then see the repercussions of those choices in the actual game environment is very, very important. Like if you choose to let um, an arms dealer go within the game, if we let him go, he could lead us to the people he sold the missiles to. That actually has game mechanic repercussions on missions that are that are that are tied to that hub. So if you let the if you let the arms dealer go, for example, that actually means terrorists you meet later on. They're more well armed. They're better supplied. In the end, I think what's the most important thing is choice.